Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Hey everybody, welcome back to Zephyr Travels. My name's Randy. And I'm Diane. So in this video, we're going to share some tips that we go through every year when we prep our house for extended travel. We go away for months at a time sometimes, and we've come up with a bunch of things that we like to do to make sure that our house is safe and that, you know, Things like mail are taken care of while we're gone. Right, right. So we're going to talk about, you know, what, what you should do with your mail, home security. We're going to go through a checklist of things that you should do before you depart. And then what you want to do on the day you depart. And our preparation is kind of geared towards winter travel. So we're going to be talking about some things that you want to do for your house during the winter, but this will apply to really any time you want to travel and any length of type of traveling that you may want to do. Right. Um, more so for an extended travel, but it could be for a week, two weeks, whatever you choose, just uh, steps you need. You sh we suggest you take um, before you travel. Right. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is mail. And you know, everyone knows that you know if you're going for 30 days, you want to put or, or less, you want to put a mail hold on your mail with a post office that they hang on to it. But what do you do if you're leaving for a longer period of time? Right. Um, well, you want to contact your local um, post office and let them know you'll be away. You could also have one of your neighbors that you trust. <laughs> One of your trusted neighbors collect your mail from your mailbox. You could place a hold on your mail for up to 30 days. Some post office allow you to do it for a longer period of time. You could also temporarily change your address. We change our address when we travel to my sister's address. And most of our mail gets forwarded. There are some items that will not be forwarded, such as new credit cards, um, Magazine, magazines, junk mail, flyers and such. They don't forward those items, which is good. Right. So we just have her collect the mail. If it's an important item that we really need to see right away, what we do is have her take a picture of it and text it to us, such as tax bills or, um, you know, anything that she would deem and we would deem to be important that really could not sit around and, and wait to be mailed at a later time. Right. And then she collects it for a period and usually like maybe once a month or so, we ask her to forward whatever mail she has to us. And then, you know, we just kind of go through it at that point. Right. And we can do this at campgrounds that allow mail delivery. Not all campgrounds have this service. Your state campgrounds won't have it. It's usually private campgrounds. Right. Private campgrounds. So we always try to hit a private campground for a few days or a week or so while we're traveling so that we have some place we can send our mail to. Post office will scan each piece of mail and will email it in a... In a an email every morning. An email every morning to you so that you can see what you have coming when you get home or uh, when you have the mail sent to you. Yeah, that also will give you notifications of any packages you may be getting. And, and this is a free service that you can just sign up for at the U.S. Post Office, uh, Postal website. Um, it's great because uh, you get a daily notification and you get this all the time, no matter if you're traveling or not. So every morning we know what mail we're getting, even when we're home. Okay. Another option you can also choose is to have a third-party mail service. One example is Escapees. Yeah, you, Escapees is a club that you can join. And they offer a mail service. There's, it's, you're going to pay for this. It is a fee. But the, you can actually set up a domicile or residencies through these clubs. And if you're a full-time traveler, you can set up the, your home residency is in Texas or Florida or wherever you choose. Um, they will review your mail. They will scan it. They will create a virtual mailbox that you can look at. And then you can tell them what to keep and what to forward, and then they will forward it to you. And this actually can all be done just on an app on your phone. Another way you can reduce your mail, if you choose to, is to set up your bills on auto pay. And most banks, or many banks, do allow offer this service. Um, such things as utility bills, credit card bills, um, loan payments that you do on a regular basis. You can set all those up. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very convenient way. I mean, that's what we do. We have very few bills mailed to us. I think our dentist is probably the only one that actually mails us a bill. Mm -hmm. um, everything else we pay online. And either we have it set up on auto pay, like our utilities for our home, our, our phones and whatnot, or we pay it um, through a credit card and just pay a monthly credit card bill. Okay. The second thing we want to talk about is home security that you want to take care of before you do leave. Yeah, um, we, without trying to get into too many details of what our home security is, we want to share some tips with you on things that you should think about when you're setting up your house and getting ready to travel. Um, one of them is you know, obviously a security system. You should have some type of security system in your home. There are many of do-it-yourself type of security systems like Simply Safe or Ring where you set these up, um, you install them yourself, and then you can either pay to have them monitor them or you can self-monitor the system. One of the systems that they do offer that you do pay for is a you know, a professionally installed system with mon monitoring through ADT. Um, that seems to be a very popular choice, and um, they will let potential intruders or whoever um, know that your house is protected. They do set up signs around your house so they know that your, ha your house is protected. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different options here, and we're not suggesting one over another. It's just something where you really need to look at what you need for your home and set that up uh, accordingly. Um, we live in a very safe neighborhood. It's a small neighborhood and our neighbors keep an eye on our place. So from our perspective, maybe we need something different than if you live in an area where you're not as comfortable leaving your home without a higher level of security set up for it. Right. And that's another safeguard you can do if you do feel comfortable telling your neighbors. And I'm sure if your neighbors are observant like ours are, they know that you, you are out traveling, you won't be back for a while. And they, you know, they keep an eye on our house and they will contact us if something unusual happens as such as, I think, was it last year, the, the village came and was digging up our yard that yeah. we didn't know about. Well, we knew about it. They came right before we left, but the neighbors made a point to let right. us know what was going on, send us pictures right. and everything. And we actually let our neighbors use our driveway while we're gone. And, and it's another way to make the place look like we're here. Mm -hmm. um, they, they actually store their trailer where we would normally park our trailer in our driveway. And for that, I know they're always looking at our house because their trailer's parked there. Right. And we'll get messages, text messages or emails. You know, they'll want to know where we are and, uh, you know, if anything unusual is happening. So, yeah, it's always nice. So if you live in a neighborhood that you feel comfortable Relaying this information to your neighbors, we, you know, we highly suggest it. Yep. Well, getting back to um, home security systems, though, we should talk about some of the things that you should include in your home security system. Um, obviously, cameras. You want to have some type of a camera in your system where you can, or multiple cameras, really, where you can monitor around your home, especially on the outside and your en multiple entrances to your house, your front door, your back door, your garage door. You really wanna have some type of camera around those areas to make sure that if anyone's lurking around those areas, you can take a picture of them. Um, you can actually yell at them through the cameras. Um, and what we've done, and we actually had a situation when we were traveling one time where someone came to our door. You know, We did not know who they were but our cameras caught them. And so I sent pictures of that person out to our neighbors and saying, hey, keep your eye out for the person. We don't know why they were visiting our home, but you know, just be careful. They didn't leave any messages or say anything or anything like that. Another things that you wanna make sure you have is sensors on all your doors and windows so that you're notified if they're open or closed, um, uh, motion sensors in your home. And a big one for us is remote locks. Now, you can easily give a key to your trusted neighbor or family members or such, and they allow them access to your house. But what we've done is we've got remote locks on all our doors that we can give a code to a neighbor and allow them to come into our house when we need to. But we can also turn that code off at any time. So we basically can control who can get into our house and who can't get in our house while we're away. And we don't have to worry about keys being out to different people. Um, you know, maybe you give a neighbor a, a key to your home and then for whatever reason, 
you know, they move away or whatever and they never give you the key back, you know, you, you want to be able to control that easily. So remote locks are a great way to do that. Right. You also want to look at home automation. And by that I mean having lights turn on and off while you're gone. Um, it can be easy as just those little timers that you set up to turn on and off, or it can be more elaborate. I mean, we've actually got a home automated system in our house with pretty much every light can be controlled remotely while we're away. And we can set up routines that happen throughout the day that we have run even while we're home that turn on certain lights and turn off certain lights. We, like when sunset um, comes on, our living room lights will turn on for us. And then about the time we go to bed, the lights automatically turn off. We find that that's very comfortable for us just living here, but it also builds that routine up of why we're gone. The house looks like we're here. Okay. Another thing is uh, neighborhood watch. And this might be something that is set up in your particular neighborhood. And that's always a good source of, um, you know, security for your home and, or, and your um, property. Right. Really. Right. You want to talk to your, your trusted neighbors and ask them to keep an eye on your place. Let them know you're going to be gone, how long you're going to be gone, when you expect to come back. Ask them to check for any newspapers or anything that might get delivered to the mailbox or to the front porch. You know, ask them to just occasionally come around, pick those things up. And if you see something on your remote cameras, you can ask, ask them to do that. Another thing that you want to do is you want to update your personal contacts with the phone number for the local police where you live, not the 911 number, but the actual phone number, and it, whether it's the police or sheriff's department or whichever, you want to have that number in there because if you see something that happens, you call 911, but you're in another state, you're going to go to that local 911. You want to get a hold of your local sheriff department and or police department. And before you leave, even contact them and let them know that you're going to be gone for these this period of time and ask them to keep an eye on your home. And the third, the third thing we want to go over is what you might want to do to prepare your house a couple weeks before you depart. One of the first things you want to do is your refrigerator or your whole kitchen for that matter. Um, you want to review what, what foods and drinks and other miscellaneous items that you have in your uh, of food in your cupboards and your refrigerator. You want to you know, look at what you will use before you leave, what, f what food you'll take with you, what foods will be discarded, and you want to repack unused dry food in, in sealed containers so it's not contaminated while you're away or, you know, have any bugs get in there or, you know, such like that, which is, that's totally gross. Yeah. But, so you just want to make sure that you take with you the things you need, the food you need, the drinks, the snacks, whatever, the supplies, and um, discard, you know, things that you don't need and that will spoil definitely by the time you get back. Yeah, this is a good opportunity to kind of purge your kitchen, get rid of stuff that's been in the refrigerator for a while that, you know, you just, you're not going to eat it anyways. Empty that out, especially the freezer. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then figure out, the time period before, you know, maybe two weeks before you leave, you know, are you going to, what are you going to use? What, you, what will you have room to take and, and kind of clean things up? But you don't want to turn your refrigerator off. No, no. You can turn it down a little bit. Maybe right. if you run it on five, you know, you want to turn it down to three or something like that, but do not turn your refrigerator off. Yeah. And don't close the doors. Um, you know, what you'll come home to if you do turn it off and if you do close the doors, you'll come home to a refrigerator of mold. Yeah. And you don't definitely don't want that to happen. What else? Oh, in all your rooms, what something that I don't think we've done in the past, which now we will do and would highly recommend is to go from room to room, take pictures, take videos of everything that you have in that particular room. And this serves as, you know, in case you do get robbed so that you know what what items can be claimed, but also if you, God forbid, you have a fire or uh, something else happens that destroys your house, you will know what items were in each room so that, you know, it will 
let you know, um, you know, for insurance claims or, you know, what other, what yeah. other, yeah. Yeah, so you walk through your rooms. If you got a room with a television or stereo equipment or, or whatever, walk through, talk in your video saying this is our TV, it's a Sony such and such, or whatever it might be. Just create that record. That way you have that going forward. If anything happens, you can share that information with your insurance company, with the police department, and have a good record of what you have. Right. And um, that would be one of my top things I would want to do. Because if, you know, if you're like us and, you know, you, you suffer any type of loss, you're definitely not going to remember everything that's in the room or, um, you know, what other possessions you might have. And that would include your basement, probably your garage if you have, um, you know, items in your garage, which most people do. Right. Um, uh, your attic, if you have an attic, uh, we have a storeroom that we would uh, definitely take. Um, yeah, just yeah, yeah, everything. Guess we have a to do item to do before we leave. An item to do before we leave. Yeah. Oh, even outside. I mean, if you have items outside. Yeah, we, your outside we, patio furniture. Yeah, your patio furniture, your deck furniture. If you have a deck, um, you know, if you have gardens with items in them, the you know whatever. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The fourth item we want to go over is the day of departure, a to-do list or a checklist, whatever you want to call it. The morning you leave, you want to make sure that you turn off your city water because you don't want your water you know, on while you're gone because if a pipe bursts or something, there's going to be nobody here to turn that off and you're, you could fill your basement full of water. You never know. So you want to turn off your water coming into your house. You want to go through, especially if it's going to be cold weather, you're going to want to drain all your faucets, go through your kitchen faucet, your bathroom faucet, your shower. If you got an outside faucet, your laundry sink, you want to drain all that. What I do is I go through and I open up all the faucets on the upper level of the home. I go down in the basement to the laundry sink. I open up the laundry sink. All that water drains back down to the basement and out the laundry so that most of the pipes are fairly empty. It's sort of like winterizing your RV. Um, then you want to go through and you want to add some RV antifreeze to the drains. And really what we're trying to do is we're trying to prepare the house in case the power goes off and you don't have any heat for an extended period of time. You don't want pipes to freeze. So you're going to do that. Um, depending on where your hot water heater is in your house, if it's in the upper level where it could possibly freeze if the power went off for an extended period of time, you possibly want to even want to drain that. Um, our water heater is in the basement, so it would probably stay. It probably wouldn't freeze as quickly. So we typically don't drain the hot water heater, but we do turn the power off to it because we don't want to be running the hot water heater while we're gone. You want to go through all the rooms if you have multiple thermostats or your main thermostat and you want to turn it down to a low temperature setting. We set all our thermostats at 50 degrees. It helps us save a lot of money while we're gone because it doesn't cost a lot to heat your home at 50 degrees, especially if you're not opening and closing doors. You want to go through and turn off or unplug any unnecessary appliances, especially things like microwaves, um, TVs, computers, printers, anything that possibly could draw electricity while you're gone. You want to make sure that they're disconnected. It will save you on electricity, but it will also save you on those appliances in case you ever get an electrical strike or anything like that that could possibly damage them. You want to go through and make sure that all your doors and windows are locked and you want to, right before you leave, just discard any unused food or trash. We typically just ask our neighbors, hey, do you mind if we put some trash into your trash can while we're gone when we leave so that you know it gets out to the street and we don't actually have any trash sitting around in our trash can. One of the tips that we've just learned about is if you have an Alexa in your home, uh, the Amazon Alexa, you can tell that to guard your home while you're gone. And what Alexa will do is it will turn on its microphones and it will listen for I'm intruders. I'm not sure how to help you with that. <laughs> Thank you, Alexa. <laughs> it will listen for help. intruders and it will also listen for a broken glass and it will send you a notification if anything happens like that while you're gone. 
So that's a good tip that we just learned recently that we're going to include in our uh, future travels. Right, and we'll include that on our uh, checklist or our list of things that you can do to uh, better secure your house before you leave. Yes. I just thought of something. Before you leave, in your house, you want to close all of your inside doors. That way, if you do have a fire and it's located in one particular room, your bedroom, your bathroom, the uh, door down to your basement, any doors, and that would prevent, if you have a fire, it would be confined to that one particular room. Right. Well, we hope you found this video informative and useful. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already? If you haven't done so already, and we would greatly appreciate if you would subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. We post videos of our travels, of where places we go, and helpful hints like this, and other things that we think of while we're, you know, out, out and about. So we'd love to have you follow along in our adventures. And until the next time. We will see you down the road. Take, Take care, care, everybody.